Wait a minute. Oh, hello. This episode of Monty's Python Show is all about object-oriented programming in Python, specifically how to create and use classes. Now what we're going to do with today's tutorial is we are going to program a fantasy game called Battle Glots. And I think that um, using a real world example uh, for creating classes will be a better way to help you understand why classes are helpful and how to create them. Now to program along with me for this exercise, uh, you won't need to uh, install uh, anything unusual, just the standard Python implementation uh, will work fine. Uh, I'm going to be using Spider as my IDE, uh, but whatever you prefer to use will work great. So first off, let's talk a little bit about the game background. What is Battle Glots? Well, Battle Glots is a fantasy game involving uh, these creatures called Glots. And Glots are orc or goblin-like creatures that live in the land of Narn Thicket. And there are different types of Glots, as we're going to learn in our programming. There are regular Glots, and there are warrior Glots. And warrior Glots can wield weapons and things like that. And in this game, we're going to create a very simple game engine uh, where we will pit one type of glot against another in a battle and to see who wins. Now, before we get too far uh, into the lesson, let's just uh, cover a few basics on object-oriented programming and classes. So what is a class? A class uh, Classes are a fundamental concept in object-oriented programming. You can think of a class as a template for creating objects. Uh, an object is defined as a particular instance of a class. And so uh, why do we use classes? So, well, classes help us structure our code in a more organized way. In particular, they promote reusability and maintainability of our code. As you're going to see, we can create objects that have common attributes and methods in one place and then control, create and control many different objects from those classes. When you define a class, you are creating your own data types. You get to define what they are, uh, like their attributes, and what they can do. Those are the methods. Okay, we're, we're ready to go ahead and get started writing our code for our uh, Battle Glots game. And we're going to use classes to create the characters in the game. And we're going to start with the most basic character, which is just a glot. So we're going to create a class for glots. And the way you create a class is you use the class keyword, class. Then you name the class. We're going to name this glot colon. And notice that the name of the class is following Pascal case. So that is the guideline for naming classes. You capitalize the first letter of each word in your class name. And for this class, we're going to start off with a very simple one. It doesn't do anything. We're just going to enter pass. Now, let's create uh, an instance of our class, of a glot class, and see what it looks like. So I'm going to say uh, g1, that's going to be the, uh, the variable name that we're going to store the first object, g1 equals glot. Now let's run this code. Okay, so we can see it ran without error. And let's just see what g1 is here. I'm going to type in g1 in my console and go. And we can see that uh, g1 is something. It is a glot object, and you can see the location in memory there. You see the... Um, the address of where glot exists in memory. So glot is something in memory. So we've successfully created an object g1 which, an, which is an instance of the glot class. Let's go ahead and give g1 a couple of um, attributes. So um, let's say that basic glots um, have um, some level of strength. Um, so let's say that a G1 has a strength rating of 0.2. So a basic glot hasn't done a lot of weight training or any kind of high intensity uh, interval training yet. So he's got a low strength rating. So all, all basic glots have the same starting strength. And let's say uh, G1 has uh, no armor. Let's say a basic glot has no armor. They walk around in uh, thin leather loincloths and look silly. All right, so let's say they have no armor. But let's say that um, glots are productive. Uh, so let's give it a productivity attribute. And let's set that equal to 2. Okay. So let's run that code. All right. So it ran without error. 
So let's just go over here in the console and let's just double check to see does G1 in fact have these attributes. So I'm going to print out G1 dot uh, strength. Yep, 0 0.2. So the items that I created here, those attributes are saved in memory. So our our glot G1 has strength of 0.2, armor 0, and productivity of 2. In fact, we could print, let's print out a little message here. Uh, let's say um, glot um, has strength g1.strength armor of g1.armor and productivity of g1.productivity. There we go. And it came back with a message. Clot has strength of 0 0.2, armor of 0, and productivity of 2. So these are attributes of our, um, our particular object, G1. Let's suppose we wanted to create another glot called G2. All right, so we're going to create G2 or instantiate G2 by setting G2 equal to the glot class. All right, and G2, and we said glots all have the same strength, armor, and productivity. So G2 has strength equal to 0 0.2. All right. And G2 has armor equal to zero, and G2 has productivity equal to two. Okay, so let's run that code and let's just check. Uh, let's check G2's uh, armor. And make sure that. Okay, so G2 has armor zero. Well, you can see that if you have a lot of glots to create, this is really inefficient having to describe all of the attributes for each of these glots when glots, the basic attributes of them, are all the same. So it makes a lot more sense to um, put this code, creating the attributes of our glots, inside of our class definition so that each time we create a glot, we don't have to separately specify all these attributes for the glot. So let's delete all this code. And instead of doing it that way, we're going to put this inside of our class definition. So up here, we're going to make these what we call class attributes. So these are going to be true for each class, uh, each um, instance of a glot created. So we're going to set the strength equal to 0 0.2, the armor equal to 0, productivity equal to 2. Okay. Now let's run. Now let's create uh, an instance of G1. Let's call G1 here, and G1 is a glot. Okay, let's run that. Just clear this. And let's check out uh, G1.strength. There we go. We can see G1 has strength of 0.2. And watch what happens. Um, if I change this to 0.3 in our class definition here, if I print out g1.strength, you can see it's gone to 0.3 now. Okay, let's create another instance. Let's create g2, which is also a glot. Run that code. And let's print out g2.strength. So you can see it's 0.2. And I'm going to change, let's change productivity to 3 here and run that code. And now I'm going to, let's print both g1.productivity and g2.productivity. So there, you can see they both printed with 3. So by setting, by creating class attributes, um, I didn't have to specify those attributes each time I created a new glot. So you can already see the benefit of creating a class as we've reused the code for each instance of the object glot. All right, so that does it for today's tutorial. Uh, in the next video in this series, we're going to get into creating the constructor method for our glots class. See you then.